You couldn't ask for a better evening here in Knoxville as 18th ranked Tennessee plays host to LSU at Regal Soccer Stadium in a critical matchup for the SEC standings. Tennessee fifth, LSU sixth. Top six teams get a bye. The top 10 get into the SEC tournament. We welcome you into the broadcast booth alongside Tori Beeler Watson. I'm Michael Watcher. I'm glad you could join us. And Tori, uh, getting down to the nitty gritty for these two sides, but Tennessee, glad to have Bunny Shaw back. Oh, man. She, at 5'11, she has a commanding presence on the field, and she's just one of those players that elevates the level of her teammates around her. She has a nose for the goal, a player who can put the ball in the back of the net, and yes, they are undoubtedly excited to have her tonight. Regal Soccer Stadium, the site for tonight's SEC contest. 12th ranked Tennessee taking on the Missouri Tigers here in Knoxville on the last day of the SEC regular season. Here are the standings. Tennessee with a win, they're the two seed. Missouri in the picture right now, but probably needing a win to ensure a spot in the SEC tournament. Alongside Tori Beeler-Watson, I'm Michael Watrang here for the SEC Network. And Tori, both of these teams on Sunday got big wins to put themselves in position to get to Orange Beach. That's right. And Tennessee, Michael, had a really tough time against LSU. But you know what? It was a completely different story against Texas A&M. The field has been slanted to our right-hand side. They've taken five shots here in the second half. And LSU's standing up Buddy pretty well. They've got Lucy Parker man marking her. And as Lucy steps for that ball, they've got another player, Richie Williams, dropping in behind her. Well, almost worked to perfection with that defensive alignment, getting Bialzak involved, but her shot was blocked by Parker. Shaw making this run down the sideline. Gets one touch on. Taken down outside of the box, and it'll go for a corner kick rather than a foul. And Tennessee will take it on that far flag. So if I'm the Tennessee coaching staff recognizing that LSU is man marking Bunny, you can see the man mark right there by Lucy Parker. A little bit of shirt tugging, a little bit of pushing. It was a good clean tackle by Parker. Another opportunity here for the balls. 11th corner. Cousins will serve it up. Cousins strikes it, looking for Shaw. Bialzak was making that run, but never made it to her as it's cleared out. I wonder how much longer you can go with Shaw here in this second half. Well, again, Michael, is, as I said earlier in the game, just having her in there, I mean. Vignola with a shot, and it beats Brockmeyer this time. A missile from Vignola, and Tennessee has tied it. And that was just a phenomenal look from the outside for Vignola. And this is exactly what Tennessee needs to do in order to get that LSU defense on us. The shot from about 20 yards outside of the box. You can see it come across from Bialzak. Vignola able to take a touch and just fires it off her left foot. Seeing the right side of the net. Brockmeyer caught on her heels, out of position, can't even make that save. And here we go, tied up, Tennessee. Bunny Shaw comes off the field at this point as well. And Brian Penske has plenty to say to her after that. And you have to think that Shaw, although she didn't score, she certainly impacted those 13 minutes here in the second half that she was on the field and Vignola gets her third goal of the season. Well, I think that Coach Penske realizes that, you know, he's probably going to need to ask a little bit more of Bunny in this latter half of this game, LSU is not done yet. They're going to come back, punt, you know, packing a punch. They're a physical team. They're fiery. And I expect that this game's going to be a little bit chippy as it goes on. The fans have really started to make a lot of noise as well here at Regal Soccer Stadium. The Alzac, who had the assist, flings this one towards the box, and Brock Meyer will pick it up. So Tennessee had been probing and this service from Bialzak and a great touch by Vignola. Fantastic touch just gets that you know edge around LSU able to find the back of the net on the right side and it's as I said all game long you either are going to have to work from the outside in or take those shots from on you know 20 18 yards out in order to keep LSU honest. The goals aren't going to come from within the box that easily. So let's see how Tennessee 
functions without Shaw on the field now here in the second half. O'Keefe coming away with a ping-ponging ball. Now Gilroy making a run. She had some chances in the first half. Gilroy has runners in the middle. She gets to the end line, crosses it in, past a pair of players. Bialzak making the run, and another great opportunity for Tennessee. But things have opened up, and countering is LSU. Thomas, who scored the goal for LSU in the 10th minute, holding it up two on five. And that was Aaron Gilroy did a great job driving it down the right side of the field, slotting it back. That's something I've been wanting to see Tennessee do all night. And if had Tennessee had numbers in the box, that could have been converted. But, you know, LSU with the quick counterattack almost caught Tennessee by surprise. And if it weren't for, you know, Thomas having to slow it down because her teammates weren't up with her, that could have very easily been another goal for LSU. It's the quick counterattacks. Tennessee's going to have to watch that. Parker again striding forward. It's been from the defenders that have started some of these breaks for LSU. Here comes Tennessee. No numbers in pink jerseys, at least for the time being, as Flynn will take it out towards the corner flag. Flynn with the ball on her feet, tries to cross this one in. Brockmeyer left footed touch. She's on the ground, and LSU is able to clear it away for the time being. Tennessee coming out with a different fire here in the second half as Burdett takes it away from Richardson. Burdett will take a right-footed shot. Brockmeyer a diving catch. And fortunate for LSU that she caught it and didn't redirect it because Flynn was to her right. And Brockmeyer just getting a, a great read on it. Burdett with the spin away from Brockmeyer. Her timing on that was exceptional. Able to get both hands on it, preventing that rebound. As you mentioned, Megan Flynn was coming hard on that back post looking for a rebounded conversion. So Tennessee has reset the game thanks to the goal by Vignola in the 58th minute. Falls are 7-0-1 here all time against LSU, but five of the last nine have gone to overtime in this series. 